I'd like to welcome you out to another Access uh, tutorial. Today, uh, what I want to talk about is the domain aggregate functions. Now, domain aggregate functions um, are functions that that operate over the entire domain, which is the table that is being referenced. So where we've talked about aggregate functions before, what I want to do here is show you the difference between an aggregate function versus a domain aggregate function and what you can do with those domain aggregate functions that you just can't do in a normal aggregate or totals type of function. So let's pull up access here. What I first want to do here is show you a, a the aggregate function. So when we did an aggregate function, what we did was we used this totals ellipsis up here, the totals query button. And by doing so, we had then the ability in this total row here to, to do a variety of things. We could sum, we could average, take the min or max, we could count, we could calculate standard deviation. And that standard deviation would be over the field that we grouped by. So by year or by month or um, any of those periods of time, it could be by a location in the business. It could be several different whatevers that we put in in this field, depending on uh, how we decided to group them. Now, the big difference is that a domain aggregate function, which I'll show you in a second, takes this summing to a, a level where it sums over the entire table unless you put a restriction in the function itself to only total over by a certain location and stuff. But it's not restricted strictly to what is done over here. So let's show you those. I'm going to go ahead and close this one and open in design view. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I have the cursor down here in the field. Uh, really doesn't matter where I put it here, but I want to go to the builder here. And I've expanded the builder already so that I can see more information. You can open this uh, dialog box with this uh, little corner down here. And I'm going to go to functions and built-in functions. And if I look up in this expression categories box, come I come down here and I can see domain aggregate functions. And now what we see is a list that looks very similar to the aggregate functions in a totals query. Instead of average, though, it's d-average. Instead of count, it's d-count, so forth and so on. Now down here you see that d-average, and I'm going to go ahead and double click it so we can see it up here. d-average has an expression. That is the field that is being used. The domain is the table that is being used. And then you can have a criteria, although criteria is optional. They put it in the bracket down here to show that it is an optional field. If you click down here, it can, it can open up the, the uh, help file and it'll take you right to the Microsoft documentation that shows you even more about how to use the particular domain function that you're wanting to use. And for that matter, any function that's listed there. This is usually a hot link down here that gets you to help. So this is what we do with the domain aggregate functions. And so what I want to do is, now that we kind of know what an aggregate function is, I want to show you what a domain aggregate function can do for you. So let's, uh, let's close this. And I'll close this query here. And if we use a domain aggregate function, this is what it looks like. And so if, if we want to do a domain aggregate function here, we, we've turned on the ellipsis. We don't have to if we don't want to. We can, we can just leave it as a non-totals query uh, and not have this line at all. Um, but what happens here is we're going to go ahead and group it by the year and the aggregate sum is going to be the line total, and this this we've done before with our various items here, sum, average, min, max, and so forth. So you get to the domain sum over here, though, and here we have our dsum function. We've put in here the line total. Line total is the fee one field that's in the table of transactions here that we've worked with before, and it's right here, that line total right there. 
And then what we've done is the table that, that, that line total is in is dim transactions. That's this up here. If we run this, what we have is the domain sum is going to be the same for everything because it is literally totaling over the entire data set. So all the records within the data set, dim transactions, I believe it is, are going to all total to the same thing. So what we want to do now is what can I do with this? Let's say that that in in my detailed data that I have, this aggregate sum, I want to see what percent of business of the total I've done in 2011, 12, 13, and 14. Having the domain sum, being able to total, total over all of it, gives me the denominator of that formula. So the denominator of that formula ends up being, you know, the aggregate sum over the domain sum, which would give me a percent that I can use to tell me how much I've much business I've done uh, each year of the total. So let's go ahead and close this one then and look at what I did to write that piece of it, okay? Now, what I had done is created a field called percent of total. I changed the name here to revenue. Um, remember, I, I had listed that as aggregate sum over here because this is an aggregate sum of the items grouped by product category. I also had it in year as a year in the other query. So having it as a year in the other query, I'm going to just change it to product category and see what percents of each product category I can do. Then I'm going to just, for grins and giggles, go ahead and uh, change this to the year here and uh, see what by year what, uh, what the percents were. So let's look at that. If I click, oh, if I look over here now, what I've done is I've taken revenue, which points to this field over here, divided by the D sum over here. So the domain sum is the denominator and revenue is the numerator. And when I click OK here, now it's going ahead and giving me the, uh, the percent that I wanted. You can see that over the different product categories, bar equipment, for example, only 1% of my sales comes from the bar equipment. Okay. Only 5% uh, of my sales comes from commercial appliances. So my big category is ovens and ranges and refrigerators and coolers and warmers. So um, I guess that's where I need to focus most of my business. Or if I want to increase my business, I've got a lot of opportunity up here in these upper four categories. So you can analyze the data and look at the data that way. Okay. So what happens if we look at this domain aggregate function here? and I want uh, the year in there instead. Okay, so what I wanna do is take this product category and swap it out for year. Well, in order to do that, I've gotta go grab a table here. And so I wanna see all the objects here and this table is over here in dim dates. And it ties to the order date like it did in that other query. And now I can go ahead and put year over here and do away with the product category. And now I can go ahead and look at this and see that, you know, 9% of my business was done in 2011, you know, 27% in 2012. Looks like I had a little bit of a down year in 2014. So the ability to analyze the data is greatly enhanced by being able to not only total over the things you're grouping by, but also to total over the things that are within the whole database table itself. And so this uh, makes it a lot, a lot easier. Now, I hope you enjoyed what we had to share here. Hope you understand a little bit more about what you can do with domain functions instead of just regular aggregate functions. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again later. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.